Morning Exercises, August 11th Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my presence. Philippians 2.12 That which is unsavory cannot be eaten without salt. And therefore, to render it palatable, we season it. When we are going to reprove a fault or enforce a duty, we should as much as possible commend for praise opens the mind and prepares for the reception of rebuke or admonition. This wisdom the apostle here displays. There was nothing in him like flattery but to introduce his most solemn charge that they would work out their own salvation with fear and trembling, he applauds these Philippians for four things. First, their obedience. Belief, knowledge, profession, talk, everything is vain without this. The gospel was made known for the obedience of faith and these Philippians had obeyed. Secondly, the constancy of their practice. Lot's wife, at the angel's command, left Sodom, but she looked back. The Galatians did run well, but were hindered. They began in the spirit and ended in the flesh. The goodness of Ephraim and Judah was like the morning cloud, and as the early dew that passeth away. But these Philippians had always obeyed. Thirdly, the increase of their diligence and zeal. They had much more obeyed. They not only held on their way, but waxed stronger and stronger, not only continued but always abounded in the work of the Lord. Nothing is more desirable or pleasing than to see this progression. It is like the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. It is like the springing of the earth, first the blade, then the ear, and after that the full corn in the ear. Fourthly, the progress of their improvement under disadvantages. They had much more obeyed in his absence than in his presence. When he was no longer with them as a witness to observe, as an example to excite, as a preacher to warn and to animate them, some attend the word and worship of God from the influence of a friend or the authority of a father or a master. Jehoash followed the Lord all the days of Jehoada the high priest, who brought him up. But as soon as this eminent servant of God was dead, the young prince became an idolater, and even slew the prophet of the Lord. There are many who regard the eye of man more than the eye of God. It is well when our devotion springs from inward principle and does not depend upon outward excitement, when we not only forsake but abhor that which is evil, and not only follow but cleave to that which is good. There is scarcely an individual, perhaps, that does not sometimes pray, but does he delight himself in the Almighty? Will he always call upon God? There are few but are afflicted or alarmed into occasional piety. But are we the same in health as in sickness, in the house as in the temple, on the week as on the Sabbath? What an immense loss must the Philippians have sustained in Paul's absence from them? yet they obeyed much more in his absence than in his presence. 
Surely this shows that when he left them, God did not leave them. It teaches us that God does not depend upon instruments, though he is pleased to make use of them. It proves that by his own spirit he can make up for the want of any creature advantage. When by persecution the church has been deprived of her pastors, or by accident or disease, Christians have been destitute of the public ordinances of religion. They have seen his power and his glory as they have seen him in the sanctuary. The streams were gone, but the fountain was near. And where the providence of God has denied the usual means of grace, we have known the sufferers to prosper in the divine life even more than those who have enjoyed an affluence of privileges.